Thank you guys so much for taking the time today and huge congratulations on this film. Thank you. Very excited for the world to see it soon. Sorry I'm late. So much has been made of the characters that live and die in the course of this movie, but divorced of that, and, and no spoilers, what would you think would be the ideal death for both Polka Dot Man and Harley Quinn? You remember those long strips of paper that had the dot candies on them, the different colored dot candies? He just eats so many of them that he sugars out and collapses because he's a depressed guy. He needs to feel good and he just eats too much. Nom nom. What the Harley would like not go down without a fight. It would be all guns blazing. She would be like just raining hellfire on everyone. And uh, yeah, she wouldn't go down easily. Tony Montana. Exactly, it'd be Tony Montana, exactly. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. To keep talking about Harley, I mean, between Birds of Prey and this film, we've seen Harley evolve quite a lot since even just the first Suicide Squad movie. I'm curious, just like in your discussions uh, with like James Gunn and Kathy Yan, just how you are like working to progress the character and also just how you see the next step of her evolution. I mean, I, I don't really have that much authorship over where they take, where different directors, I, I mean, on Birds of Prey, I was a producer, so I, I had more of a say, but I felt very confident in James Gunn's hands that she was going to be, you know, handled in, you know, with with with, with respect to the character and the fan base, because he understands that, you know? So I was as curious as anyone opening that script up to see like, okay, what's his version of Harley and what's she like? And um, yeah, knowing that I felt confident that he's always going to honor the source material and therefore I felt very like, okay, she's in good hands. It's going to be okay. I was just excited to see what he wanted her to do. James Gunn, the level of detail that he goes into when he's writing a script is really remarkable. And I'm curious just how much access you had to that and if there were details that were not in the script that you guys discussed that just ended up informing your performances. I mean, we had... Me, oh, well, no, go ahead. Yeah. All right. I was going to say, we, we talked a lot about Star Labs. I liked talking to James about, about my character's connection to Star Labs. And James has an encyclopedic knowledge of the DC world. He's read comics his whole life. And um, so I got a lot of, it was fun to riff with him and to listen to him talk about some of his ideas about the characters and their connections to different proper places within the DC universe. So that was, that was really neat for me. I'm a superhero! We spoke a lot about like just where Harley's moral compass really lies and what, how is she best utilized in a group? I think she, I, I always speak about her as a catalyst of chaos, but not really as your emotional navigator, which thankfully she's not in this movie. And I feel like she gets to really be exercised to her full potential when that sort of weight isn't on her shoulders. And she can just be, yeah, like I said, a catalyst of chaos. And, and so we spoke a lot about that and, um, in what setting do we get to see Harley in her truest form?